Welcome back to JTMJ Crafts. How's it going, everybody? As you see, we are not working on a diamond painting. We are actually working on some Native American beading. This is what we're going to be making today. Not the tarp part. That's from another pattern that I have. I'm going to make the bird. So... The red is going to stay the same, and then all the way around the bird is going to be turquoise. And then the two end pieces are going to be yellow. So this is a pattern that is nine beads wide. So you'll want to strand your loom ten wide. And you just want to, you want to make sure this stays nice and tight and go back and forth. Not making sure, making sure you're not over crossing another one. This is your most crucial part because you do want it to stay nice and tight because if it gets slop in it, then that means your bracelet's going to have slop in it. It's not going to be perfect. So I got one, two, three, four. I can't count. Ten. That's all we need. So then it should look like this. And then I'm just going to take this and I'll wrap it around this a couple of times. Tie it off. Where'd my snippers go? Now, if if this happens to come loose on you, why you are doing this it's not a big deal and the reason why I say that is because these all you have to do is loosen this a bit and turn this out and then lock it back down and it will tighten it back up for you so we got two four six eight ten wide it is nice and tight so, oh shoot, I used all my thread. I gotta grab another bobbin of thread. Hold on one second. Okay, so I found my other, I need to find a spot to buy this in like a bulk roll. So you're gonna pull it in through your first Right, let's let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to the business here. Let's see. Let's go down. And the reason why I say go down is because last time I did this, I did it the wrong way. It, yeah, if you just look at the your hands, Jeremy, instead of trying to look at the camera. I'm 
trying to look at the camera instead of looking at my hands. So, if you guys are trying to do Native American beading, you want to go get some of this stuff right here. It's called Super New Glue. It is the shit. It is the creme of the cre of the cre uh, the creme that yeah I can't say that word. It it is awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. I'll just take a little drop of this and put on this knot to make sure there's not. Whoa, that stuff comes out so fast, so fast. Make sure that knot don't move and it stays in place. You, this stuff is a lot more liquidy than uh, regular super glue. Cut that off as short as we can get it. Should work just fine. Pull some thread out here. Now this thread that I have here is already waxed and ready to go. Okay, I got my thread. I got my needle knit. Uh ready to go and I got probably about uh, two feet of line probably way too much but so the first row is going to be nine of yellow come on I got nine on there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that on down. Last time I showed you guys how to do this, I showed you guys how to do it wrong. Not necessarily wrong. It worked the same way. It's just I was pulling it over the top and sticking the thread underneath the bottom to sew it off. You're actually supposed to bring it underneath the bottom This is always your trickiest part of it all, is trying to get all of these lined up where you want them. Got them lined up in a row. Now you want to take your needle and thread and go back over the top side of all of the thread that you just thread through there. Make sure it's nice and straight.
And then the second row is going to be same thing. Nine yellows. Step and repeat. Step and repeat. So, I figured while I'm doing this, I could talk to you guys a little bit about... There's four. Uh, growing up where I grew up. And how living on this property with all the animals that we had was just... I love growing up on this property. And that's part of the reason why I don't want to leave California. It's because... All of my childhood memories are here. Memories of my mom are here. Something I just don't want to leave. Oops. I didn't get enough. I missed one. See? I get to talking and mess up. That's it. That's why I lined it up there to make sure it was where I needed it to be before I went any further. So I grew up on this property. I live on 15 acres. This was my mom's dream of living here. Um, I moved here to this property when I was five months old. So this property has a lot of special meaning to me. One. I grew up on this property since I was five months old. Two, my mom's memories are all here. And three, my mom visits me here. And I, if I ever moved, I don't think my mom would ever come and visit me. Okay, so now we're going to get four yellows. So, growing up on this property, we've always had animals. Grew up with horses. I actually dug through a bunch of pictures. And then, okay, so now i got to get some... Another tray. Good thing I got a bunch of trays. So I need teal. Actually, this is turquoise, but teal, turquoise, it all looks about the same. So when I was six, my aunt brought home a pony. Me and my brother, my older brother, were always going out and riding my mom's horse or my aunt's horse or somebody's horse. And we always wanted a pony or a horse for ourselves. And my mom, she really didn't care. She was like, 
it's not going to be something that's going to be for free. You have to work for it. You have to, you know, make sure you take care of it. It's not something that you just get and, you know, not pay attention to it. It's something you're going to have to really make sure to take care of. You're going to have to work to feed it. So, my aunt came home one day. I love my aunt to death. This is my mom's sister. My mom and my aunt were, were both big horse people. My aunt and my mom both used to show horses all the time. My aunt used to ride competition. Uh, in the rodeos for barrel racing, my aunt used to be able to, she had this, this, uh, this horse that was in a, uh, a Mustang, and it was a <sighs> buckskin female, her name was Girl, and you can get on that horse and you can ride her with no reins. All you had to do was touch her with your foot on her side and she would turn on a dime. My aunt used to ride that horse during rodeo competitions with no reins and barrel race. And she has so many trophies from winnings and stuff. It's, it's crazy. And... Girl finally had to be put down because she got super old. But that was the best horse that I can remember being on this property. Anybody can jump on her. Uh, she was she was scary to ride. And the only reason I mean to say that is because she was psychotic. And the only reason I say she was psychotic is because she was a barrel horse. So whenever she would run around trees, she would think the trees were barrels. And, yeah. If you weren't watching yourself, you were getting brushed up against a tree. You were getting hit in the face with tree branches. She was, she was crazy. She was a damn good horse, but... Once those, uh, once she was taught the barrel race, it was stuck in her. She, she never gave up that. So, my aunt brought home, did I do that right? Did I, am I not paying attention? Three, three, and three. I'm right. So, my aunt came home one day with a a pony and she said you said you wanted a pony here you go I was six seriously internet I was six she came home with the pony said you boys said you wanted a pony here you go You can break him. <laughs> yes. So that pony was wild, crazy, but we uh, we got him broke two and five. And then two again. He was crazy. With me and my brother, my older brother, he was... Uh, at one part of the year, my older brother is two years older than I am. And then the other part of the year, 
he's only a year older than I am. So, Mary Jane, get off my cabinets, woman. So we started breaking our own ponies at six and seven years old. We were told, you want them, you break them. And we actually got pretty good at it. And we grew up on that pony for a while, and then it got to the point where we were looking for something bigger and faster and better. And that's when I, my aunt gave me her old horse. His, he was a uh, a red dun, and his name was Red. Uh, of course, his name was Red. And he had got hurt. Um, my aunt was my my aunt did a lot of my aunt was a veterinarian, and she did a lot of horse training seminars, and this horse was like, went through every horse training seminar you can think of. This horse was like the top-notch horse, except for he got hurt, and one of his, it was like his front, like, wrist, I guess you want to call it. I don't know what you call it. So, like, this is the hoof, and it's like right here. So, he couldn't run for... A long period of time or it would flare up and he would start limping on it but I could go out in the field I could ride him I can trot with him I could gallop with him I just couldn't full out run him because he was hurt and I was I was in love that was my first love and in, in a horse seven and I'll show you guys a picture of him in a second. That was my baby. I loved that horse to death. When I was having a bad day, that horse would just be like, he would take it all the way. That's what I was saying. If, if you guys have, or, or you're dealing with anxiety, a horse is like, is, almost, is just as good as a dog. Helping you with your anxiety. No lie. I like. I can walk up to a horse. And just be. Happier. Within minutes of being around that horse. So. I had him. And. Back in. I can't remember the year exactly. It was. There was a big fire around my neck of the woods, and everybody that was living out towards Jones Valley. Jones Valley is a, a cove on the lake, and... That's where the fire broke out. So everybody that lived in Jones Valley had to evacuate. And my aunt was telling people, you can bring your horses here, your cows here. Because we live on 15 acres. <coughs> we have probably at least <clears throat> 10 acres of field. And there's a... <clears throat> three different sections of the field. So, like, behind my dad's house was where my mom kept her horses. Behind my house is where we kept my horses and my aunt's horses. <sighs> Sorry. I had to get a drink. I was getting, like, dry throat. 
So behind my house, there's actually a a two stall horse barn, and uh, there are twelve by twelve stalls, and in the middle there's a twenty by twelve hay section. But since we don't have any horses anymore, because my dad decides he doesn't like horses and he don't want to have horses, so nobody can have a horse. Which is pathetic. I'm 40 freaking 2 years old. I pay my bills. If I want a horse, I can have a horse. But I'm saving my money. And I'm going to buy a mule. Because I want a freaking mule. Mules, mules are so freaking cool. I got to count again. So hold on a second. No, I don't want you. Five teals. So, I had red for a, quite a while because my aunt had bought a paint. His name was Michael. He was a stubborn pain in the butt. Okay, so now I need to open up some reds. So, while I'm opening the reds, I'll show you guys a couple pictures. These beads that I'm using are so much better quality than the first set of beads I was using. Um... way better quality they're more uh, same diameter they're not all misshapen the only bad thing is is they're like six dollars for this this small thing I mean I can get quite a bit out of this but I've already ordered like Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things of them, so... Plus, leathers, and we'll get into that stuff later. When we get done with this, I'll show you guys how to put it together. So, this was my horse, Red. He... He was a pain in my butt. He had a big... Uh one of those big Rubbermaid feeders and he always knocked it off and he liked to eat it off the ground like a stubborn butt. That uh, old wash tub, bath tub, I had to screw that to the wall because he would kick it all over the place. He would throw his food all over the ground. He was just stubborn. And then this was my mama with her horse, Mo. Mo was a retired racehorse. Mo was a big girl. I mean, you can see my mom standing next to her. She was. Mo was a big girl. Mo was a good girl. She she was a retired racehorse. And. The other pictures I'll show you guys in a minute. So after I had red, uh, around that time when that fire broke out, and this lady brought over three baby. No, wait. Before that happened, my brother. Let's see, I got five. Okay, and then we got one red. And then three teal. So my brother had got this horse that was... He was a wild child. He, uh... He was an Arabian Mustang. And... He was... A handful. I mean, I, I, if anybody knows what a, a 
an Arabian or a Mustang is. They're hot-headed horses. Uh, they can be super stubborn. And this horse was stubborn. His name was Chisholm. He was named after a pair of boots. But he was also named after John Wayne. And so my brother got him and he had me helping him or helping him break Chisholm. And so I ended up and broke Chisholm and started all of his groundwork and long lining because my little brother he didn't know all that stuff. I mean I was taught that stuff when I my broke my first pony. My aunt taught me how to do all that stuff. Uh, we started off with putting a little bit of weight on the pony. Mary Jane, you're gonna get kicked out of my craft room. You scratch on that wood cabinet, I swear, you're getting kicked out. I don't know what her trip is. On wood, she loves to scratch it. Ugh. Squirrel. So, I broke Chisholm. I did all of his groundwork. I did all of his... Everything that I could possibly do to get that horse to where he would ride. For my brother. And then... My brother was young. I mean, he's five years younger than me. And it got to the point where he was scared of Chisholm. Because Chisholm... Uh, uh, let's just put it this way. If you pulled on Chisholm's mouth to tell him to stop, he would start bucking. He did not like a bit in his mouth. I don't blame him. I don't like riding horses with bits in their mouth. I think it's cruel. I would rather ride a horse without a bit. There's no, no reason. If it's a good trained horse, there's no reason to to have a bit. Mary Jane. Oh God, I'm gonna kill a chat. I swear, she is my march enemy. So, around the time when this fire broke out, I had pretty much, my brother was pretty much done with him. So, I took over and finished doing training with him. Started taking him out on some trail rides, getting him used to more and more and more stuff. I took uh, gunny sacks, I filled them full of aluminum cans, put them on his back to, you know, get him used to sounds. And then, around the time of the fire, this lady shows up and she's got three baby Mustangs and I'm just like, ah! Hold on, you guys. So she's got three baby Mustangs, and I'm just like, oh my god. My favorite color horse, f color phase of a horse is a buckskin. It's my all-time favorite. Um, I'm also a huge fan of grays, uh, dapple grays. and Chisholm was a red roan. Um, he turned out a, a gray, and then as he got older... His coat turned more of a reddish color. He still had grays in him. He was, he had, like, his face was more gray. And then as he went back to his butt, it turned more uh, red, which he was gorgeous. But this lady shows up to the house, and she's got three baby Mustangs. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I would love to have a straight purebred Mustang 
from BLM. Oh, I can't. Four. And so I start talking to her, and I'm like, so you want to get rid of one of those babies? She's like, yeah, I'll get rid of both the bus, the Mustang, uh, bucks, buckskins, because she had a, a, a light buckskin and a dark buckskin. The dark buckskin was a female, and the light was a male. I was interested in the male because I love a light buckskin. And she's like, well, they're brother and sister. I can't let them go unless they go together. And I was like, the one's half the size of the other one. I doubt they're brother and sister. But if it makes you feel better, I'll take both of them. So she was like, well, what do you have to trade for it? And she was like, I really like that that horse over there and that that round pin. Because at the time, I was working Chisholm. And I was like, well, technically, that's my brother's horse. But I'm sure if I talk to him, he wouldn't care if I made a trade. So I went up to the house, I talked to him, I talked to my mom and my aunt because they were always the ones that were they were always the ones that were buying and selling horses and knew everything about horses and my aunt was like, "Well, let's go take a look at these ponies." So we go down there. My brother's like, it's pretty much your horse. You do what you want with him. And he was at the the state where I had much done all the work to Chisholm that I possibly could. He was still hot-headed. He was still a spitfire. So... I have the choice to, to make a trade for him for the two babies. And I'm glad I did, but then at the same time, I regretted it so much because I pretty much had to start all over with these babies. When Chisholm was already rideable, and these babies were only probably five months old, six months old at, at the most. So, I, I loved getting the babies because they're my favorite colors, but at, in the end, I regretted it because... I had to start all of my work all of them. When I had pretty much got Chisholm to what I wanted him. But, like, two years later, I, I run across the lady that got Chisholm off of me. And she was like, oh, you will not believe how good of horse this is. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, whoever trained him did an excellent freaking job. And I was like, well, I did all the, all of the work with him. Did his groundwork, his sound des uh, desensitizing, and all kinds of stuff with that horse. And she's like, well, you did a phenomenal job because this horse is the best horse I've ever had in my life. And I was like, now you're making me feel like I should have never got rid of this horse. So, long story short, this horse now is... I missed it. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. There we go. Yeah, you want to make sure you get over top. of that thread. 
If not, you'll have a dropped bead. So now Chisholm is on top of the world. Chisholm is worth a lot of money. Uh, he, she trained him to be an endurance horse. So basically he'll do like a 500 mile run, a 500 mile race. And it's all like uphills and downhills and, uh, and he, he was the best horse for that situation. Being a, 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 a Arabian and a Mustang, he was hot headed. He had, he had so much strive to do whatever you wanted him to do. So it, it worked out in the long run. So I got one, two, three, two, so I need three. So, yeah, it just, after I made the trade, I just kicked myself in the butt because those babies were, were not held, or not, I mean not held, but they were not touched. You can tell they were wild as wild can be. Let's see, I got three. I'm trying to make sure I'm staying in the area I need to stay in. So they were just, you can tell they were not tamed. They were still like fresh, fresh. Like right off of the reservation, which they don't really technically come from the reservation, they come from BLM land. Land of the Indians own, and land that BLM owns. And so I ended up and Gave those two babies away to this, at the time, this chick I was dating. I gave them to her uncle. And now both of those Mustangs are pack horses up in the Trinity Alps. And they are used for guided uh, hunts. They take people and backpack them 30, 40 miles into the woods and take them on hunts. And those horses are phenomenal horses. I actually got to go on a hunt with them and they're awesome horses. So this is a couple of the pictures I found. Of the babies. When, like right after I got them you can see I still had the leads on them because you couldn't catch them you couldn't walk up to them and grab them with the by their halter I had to leave leads on them until they were friendly enough uh, that's the mare she was the dark buckskin she ended up and cut her eye really bad one day and I had to go call a freaking bet and come down and spend like $300 and had her knocked out basically and stitched up these these pictures aren't the best pictures they're they're dark and then this is a picture that I found that was my pigs that was my boar, this one, and then that was my sow, her name was Red, and then there's some goats back there. And then this pig here, her name was Blue. She was the pig that lived in my house for a year and a half. Her mama broke her leg when she was a baby. So I brought her in the house and put her into a 
a milk crate and basically uh, set her leg and basically kept her in this little teeny tiny milk crate so she couldn't move. And then somehow this picture's in with those pictures. And yeah. Def Leppard, baby. Yeah. I remember that shirt. I had that shirt for days. I was in the kitchen baking. I think I was... I don't know. 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Let's see. Does this say? Nope. Don't say. But that was in our old house. Before it burnt next to the ground. So. That was. Before 94. So that was a long time ago. So yeah, I got rid of Chisholm. It was the worst mistake I ever did because same thing. I had to start all over with those babies. But they ended up and turned out to be really good horses, so it turned out to be okay. So, that's pretty much all the horse talk I have to talk about. So, might as well talk about pigs. I used to raise pigs for a living. Seriously, for a living. I was a freshman in high school and I had a pig business. I sold pigs to FFA kids to show at the the fair. I had some of the best pigs you can buy. My pigs were let's see for eight years that I raised pigs I had grand champion reserved grand champion runner up and all the way down to like 13th or 14th place my pigs were like from, f say, 15th place all the way to the top. My pigs did good every year at the fair. I had people coming to me out of the woodworks asking me for pigs. And around here, when you raise pigs, a lot of people sell them for a lot of money. Like, they were selling pigs for like $200 a pop. When I was selling my pigs for $50 because I wasn't in it to make a bunch of money. I was in it because I loved I love pigs. I love raising pigs. I used to have a pot belly pig that lived in the house forever. That's a, that's a different story. He, uh, when uh, I went back to school, he pretty much became my mom's baby. So, he pretty much disowned me and became my mom's sidekick protector. And, oops, I need four. And, he was the best, pig, the best pot belly pig ever. He was like a dog. If you tried to hurt my mom, he would rip your face off. He had big old tusk. He hated my dad, which I can't say I blame him. Cause, you know, shit happens. Um but he just he was like my mom's best friend. He was 
right beside my mom. My mom would be laying on the floor. And I'd come out to tell my mom goodnight. And I'd be like, where's Arnold at? I want to tell him goodnight. And he'll be underneath the blankets with my mom. And I go to pick up the blankets and he'll come out. Oh, 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 oh. And my baby. I miss that pig. He passed away a few years ago from old age. I don't really think it was old age that did it. I think my dad... Long story short, Arnold was an inside pig. He spent his days outside with the dogs and spent his nights in the house. And after my mom passed away and my dad remarried the next year, uh, Arnold didn't like my dad's wife. So Arnold became an outside pig permanently and it just got to the point where it was too cold for him and it killed him. Plus, it also, uh, Arnold became, I guess you could say mean, after my mom passed away. He, he didn't want nobody to be around him. He would somewhat allow my dad to uh, be around him for a short period of time, but that was about it. Like, my dad could go down and feed him, and then Arnold would be like, ah, 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 ah. Get out of my face, leave me alone, I don't want you. Uh, if you're wanting to know, was he named after Green Acres? Yes, he was. Green Acres is the place to be. Yep, that would be Arnold. Um, my grandmother, which is my mom's mom, she used to raise potbelly pigs. And back in 94, we suffered a, a house fire. And our house burnt to the ground. Uh, because some moron came to our house to look at our pigs that are my pigs I had for sale and we weren't home and my dad was back in Ohio playing in a softball tournament and we me and my mom and my brothers were at Home Depot or no not Home Depot uh, home base it's at the time was what, where my dad worked and we get a phone call inside of home base and they're like you need to come home immediately and we're like what the hell is going on papa would never say anything to us about what was going on he just you guys need to get home immediately so we haul ass home which is Probably about a 20 minute drive, 25 minute drive. And we get to the house and there's fire trucks everywhere. And we're like, what the hell? So this guy came out to look at my pigs. He was smoking. There was a bucket on the back porch that had a bunch of rags in it was stain on it. The moron threw his cigarette in the bucket with the rags that had stain on it and burnt our house down. We don't know who the guy was because he was there while we were gone. All my papa said was some guy showed up he said he was looking for pigs. My papa said, you need to come back later when they're home. The guy left. And then next thing you know, the house is in flames. We lost everything. Not 
a easy thing to go through. I was a, that was in ninety four. I graduated in ninety six. So I was a sophomore. One, two, three. And then we go a step up. So yeah, it, we went through the house fire, which sucked because I loved our old house. We had a back porch that was built on that was our game room. My dad had a, uh, a beer tap back there. And he'd be sitting in his chair or his recliner, smoking out of his 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 pipe, which I'm not talking about like a pipe, like what you think I'm talking about. But he, my grandfather, my my dad used to smoke out of a pipe, and he used to smoke uh, smoking tobacco. And I remember at a young age, we would sit at on his lap at night, and he would let us take one puff off his pipe. <laughs> My mom used to get all pissed off. Don't let them take that. I think that was the best best memories I've had with my dad. Smoking on his bike. And then they quit making the tobacco that he used to smoke and he quit smoking. Because he never liked anything else. And it was only, the only time he ever ever did it is when it was nighttime and he would sit in his recliner by the fireplace oh come here needle oh yeah that figures it fell off good thing is is this this thread is waxed so it needle threads really simple nope 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 you get your butt back over there so I end up might make this into two videos because I'm already at almost an hour. I guess if I wasn't rambling on so much it would go a lot faster. But that's okay. That means the next video we can get the rest of it done. Okay, so I got three and then stepped up one. So then this goes. I'm trying to remember this pattern. Goes one of these, one of these, two of these. One of these, one of these, dear Lord, and then one of these, and then one of these. That was a tough one so uh, in the comments below let me know what you guys would like to hear for a video next week is that right Thank you.
red, teal, teal, oh. Supposed to be two reds right there. And I dropped my needle. I almost forgot to hit the record button again. <laughs> so, we're going to go ahead and give it another 10 minutes, and then we'll see how far we have gotten in that 10 minutes, and then uh, we'll get going, and... Let you guys go on with your day. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reds. Knock it off, you two. And one, two. I swear these two kids, I tell you, kids. Uh, I love kids to death, and I would love to have my own kids one day, but the way these two act, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I do have a kid technically, but shh, nobody knows. I don't see her. It is what it is. So, I went to the grocery shopping today, and it's that time of the year. They have my favorite candy. I bought three bags. Three one pound bags. Uh huh. Uh, one of the bags is going to my homegirl, Patriotic Beauty. The other bag is mine, of course. And then the other bag is going to Sister Addiction. Yummy, 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 yummy. You can't have none. It's sugar. You don't need sugar, boy. Mmm. I wish they made this candy all year long. I mean, as much as I eat it when it's in stock, I'd probably have worse teeth off than I do now. But the issues with my teeth are from having braces for seven years. Yeah, if they say they're going to put braces on you... Make sure they they keep it within a reasonable amount of time because they told me I needed braces and at first they said it was uh, it was going to be two years tops. It ended up being seven years with braces. Not fun. I had a bridge in my mouth. 
so, uh, my top jaw was smaller than my bottom jaw. So, they originally wanted to break my jaw in four places and wire it shut. And my mom said, uh, you're gonna do what? And they're like, oh, we're gonna... Okay, I'm just making sure I'm right. We're gonna... Sh wire his mouth shut, break his jaw, wire his mouth, and she's like, N um, no you ain't, what's your other option you have to, for him, and they said, well, the only other option we have is if we, uh, pull teeth and try to put braces on him, and move the jaw around that way. And my mom said, okay, do that. It'd be better than trying to break his damn jaw. Plus, when they wanted to do it, it was, it was like my freshman year in high school. It's like, you are not going to break my mouth on freshman year of high school and then wire my mouth shut and expect me to go to school. No way, Jose. I will not do it. No thank you, Kimo Sabe. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. You guys can see what it's looking like so far. I'm going to tighten this back one up over here a little bit. But we can do that when we take it off of the loom. So, for today, we're going to call it quits. And... I will get this video up tomorrow in a reasonable time for you guys. And then next week, I will finish this video off and show you guys how to make it into a bracelet. Depending on how long this goes. Hopefully, I mean, we're over the halfway mark, so we should have plenty enough room on the loom to finish it. So... That's it for today. Stay tuned to next week for the part two and to teach you guys how to make it into a bracelet the way I like to. And uh, as always, gotta remember to have your peace, love, and treat each other with the respect that you deserve to be treated with. And I hope you all have a fantastic day.